Hollywood Square's host and Broadway star Peter Marshall has died. Marshall was a singer and actor who appeared in films and on Broadway before landing the job in 1966 on Hollywood Squares. According to his publicist, Marshall died of kidney failure at his Los Angeles home. He was 98. Marshall, the original master of the Hollywood Squares, was going to be our center square for a week. I thought, what a wasted opportunity if we just let him sit cozily in the center square. So I asked Peter a question, which I'll recreate for you now. Peter, you ready to retake the podium? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, what the hey? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah, All right. Stay tuned. Peter Marshall back as host of Hollywood Square. All right, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, and welcome to the Hollywood Squares. Hello, stars. Hello, Peter. Good to see each and every one of you. I don't touch that dial. This is not the Game Show Network. No. <laughs> uh, it's me after 102 years. I would I'd like to meet our current champion. Uh, this is uh, it's Diana. That's correct. Uh, what's your last name? Dale. And you, well, I saw you. I was in the center square. I watched you in a car yesterday. Yes, I did. We'll find out a little more about Diane a little later on. We're meeting a, a new challenger here. I'm Mr. X. It's a gentleman from El Cajon, California. Let's say hello to Steve. Is it polite? Yes, sir. Steve, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Object for the players to get three stars in a row. I have to cross them down diagonally. It's up to them to figure out if the stars give you a correct answer or make one up. That's how they get the squares. The game is worth $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Times have changed. You are the challenger. Hey, good luck to both of you. I want you to pick a star. Good luck. Uh, Tom Bergeron, please. Oh, right, right there, yeah. The game face on here, Peter. I thought you looked familiar. Yes, yeah. yes. According to Reuters. Reuters. You know Reuters. Reuters, sure. Yeah. 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 If a dog uses a high-pitched, unevenly placed bark, what is it telling you? That, that would tell you that Bob Barker is at the front door with a pair of clippers, Peter. <laughs> Barking at me, oh God! <laughs> no, I, that's actually uh, that's a warning bark. That's uh, that's a stay away, <laughs> stay away bark. I agree. No, it wants to play. Yeah, it wants to play. A break for our cha our champion here. So I put a circle block. there and Diane Chance for two in a row. Here. Martin Mall, please. Mr. Mall. Hi, Peter. It's been a while. <laughs> and a survey by the National Safety Council. Mm -hmm. Are you more likely to die from choking, drowning, or poisoning? I think so. Um, <laughs> no, we need one of uh, the least other. That's what I tell myself every time I light up. <laughs> oh, I, I would think probably choking. Choking. I'll agree. Nope, it's poisoning, then drowning. Choking came in third, paid 280. Okay, a break for you. Come the next day. Uh, Kathy one. Griffin, please. Kathy, my darling Kathy. Here we go. This is very important here. Now listen carefully. Okay. Why can't historians locate anything actually dated 1 B.C.? Because that was so 2003 years ago. <laughs> Over. Um, all right. I would say historians can't locate that because um, it's stuff that's eroded by now. I disagree. Good for you. It's because no one knew who Christ was. Uh, how could they have dated 1 B.C.? So we put an X there and over here to uh, our champion. Go ahead, uh, Diana, for the start. Wink Martindale for the block. And my buddy, the Winker. The Winker, here we go. What are you if you're a virtue, a throne, or a seraphim? Rod Roddy in a blue sequin coat. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Sorry, Rod. He's not a virtue. Now, I happen, I happen to know this one, and I won't go into great detail, but the answer is simply a B, a B, double E, a B. A B. I disagree. You would be, and you are, darling, an angel. How could you disagree yes, okay. with me? Put a circle there. Over to you, my friend. Uh, Chuck Woolworth for the block. Hey, Chuck. My buddy. What were Disneyland employees banned from wearing while on the job until March of 2000? I happen to know this. Good. All Disneyland employees under Michael Eisner's authority right. could not wear... There was a belt that had Mickey Mouse written on it. He had to wear the belt that had Mickey Mouse's face on it. They didn't want anything because they wanted the children to see it. I disagree. What do you yeah, think it was? That was a terrible bluff. <laughs> <laughs> it was what just think it, might be? it was uh, absolutely jewelry, pathetic. Maybe. No, 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 no. You know what it was? No, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> it was uh, hair. It's mustaches. Uh, Beards, mustaches. sideburns, goatees, yeah, facial hair. Yeah. You've got the bluff. <laughs> All right, over to you, dear. There you go. Go ahead, Diane. Bob Eubanks, please. We've got, I'll first, bet you, Peter, is this the first time you've ever done this show with long pants on? <laughs> or, you or, may be right. Or I know, with any pants on. I'll tell you, Peter used to wear tennis shorts. Uh, yes, I did. And then suits on the top. My legs were awfully cute in those days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're glad hey, Bob, you have long pants on. Uh, Firstscience.com yeah. says about 60% of all American babies are named after what? After they're born. Named after famous people. I disagree. No, they're named after relatives who could be famous people. Yeah. We could accept that. You are. Yeah. We're going to be right back after this. Good plan. Thank you. Thank you. Paul in. For 250 bucks, Paul, true or false? Your teeth are about the same size and shape as a pig's. <laughs> Look who's talking, beaver face. <laughs> Promotional consideration furnished by the following. I need... This is the Hollywood Squares, and I'd like you to uh, find out a little more about our champion right now. Diana, tell us something about yourself. I live in Denver, Colorado, with my handsome husband, Jack. I'm a freelance writer. And Jack and I have three dogs, three cats, and a very spoiled green wing macaw named Picasso. Well, good for you. And good for Jack, by the way. Steve, tell a little about yourself here. Oh, I'm from El Cajon, California. I am a uh, bodily injury claims adjuster. At home, I've got a beautiful wife, Sherilyn, and my beautiful baby boy, 16-month-old Zachary. Well, good for you guys. Hey, we have three circles on the board, three X's, but I think, Steve, it is your turn to take a good look and pick a star. I uh, will go with Jim Lang for the block. You got it. Steve Allen, Steve Allen, he created the phrase, I'm sure you've heard it, it, it it's bigger than a bread box. What show did he uh, create that phrase on? Well, I don't know, but it was one of the favorite questions of the Bachelorettes on the dating game. Oh, I'll bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, uh, I've got a secret. He I've got a secret. I've got a secret. I'll disagree. Do you have any idea what it is? Tonight Show. Nope. What's my line? All you had to do was disagree. Put an extra. All right, over to you, Diane. Jimmy Walker for the block, please. This is for the block. Jimmy, what does Dr. Joyce Brothers say New Yorkers spend an average of 30 minutes each day of their lives doing? Learning new curse words. <laughs> I would say, uh, without a doubt, in New York, walking. That's what walking. we do all the time in New York, is walk. I disagree. It's standing in line. You have the block. Put a circle there. We have four circles, four X's. So this is for all the marbles. Hey, Big Chuck and Brett, the slogan for the movie Bonnie and Clyde was, they're young, they're in love, and they do what? A what? guy in the last yeah. scene, which sort of kills the movie. I mean, you sort of know the end. They die. He means they die. They die. I'll disagree. They kill people. You've got it. Put an X there. The $1,000. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do right now. It's time to play our secret square game, and today it's worth $1,000. Well, we've already had uh, 7,376 in prizes for our secret square, including a Rose Bowl tour. And today, we are adding this prize. Take a look. Now you can walk right in and sit right down. It's a new projection TV and a recliner. 
Fresh and original, the Branson Recliner from Lazy Boy. Looks great closed and when reclined. Both comfortable and stylish, it's a great place to relax at the end of the day. As you enjoy watching Hollywood Squares on this Panasonic 47-inch projection television. For the best service, selection, and value, go to the source, Brand Source, your neighborhood appliance, electronics, and home furnishings expert. All worth $2,599. Thank you very much, Kenny. I mean, uh, Rod. <laughs> Incidentally, Carol Merrill, for this particular show, flew all the way in from Australia. I just want you to know that. And we appreciate it. Okay, now let's show the home audience the secret square. Okay, you won the game, Steve, so you're going to pick a star. We'll go with Jimmy Walker, please. All right. Listen here, Jimmy. A poll in London's Evening Standard reveals that a majority of British people think Prince Charles should finally do what? They think that maybe, finally, he should marry Camilla. I'm going to agree. Very good, and that's it, yeah. <laughs> we have a commercial. <laughs> we'll be back with the good Lord's willing and the trick no right. It's so great of you to help us out here. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yeah. I wouldn't miss this. Good. I wanted to see my old friend Peter Marshall. Yeah. He was great I know on Hollywood Square. Yeah. yeah. Who's hosting it now? <laughs> Promotional consideration furnished by the following. I'm a doctor. Now offering up to five more inches of leg room in our new Economy Plus section. We're doing what we can to make travel easier for you. Closed captioning provided by... Introducing New America Online 8.0. It's not just a new version, it's a whole new vision. Sign up today. Call 1 800 4 Online. We got the All right, the second game of the match, and uh, Steve has the next up there, so Diane, it's your turn to pick a star. Tom Bergeron, please. All righty. This one. Uh, if I may, I just want to promote my new book, Backstage with the Original Hollywood Square. <laughs> very proud of it. Thanks for the plug, Tom. You're welcome. You're welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> Good book. Hey, this well-known name is the world's largest purchaser of beef, pork, potatoes, and second largest of chicken. Who is it? Uh, I think we all know that. It's Marlon Brando. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's actually McDonald's. McDonald's. I'll agree. That's exactly right. Very good, Mr. Bergeron. And welcome to the panel. Uh, Go ahead, thank Steve. You. Uh, Kathy Griffin, please. Oh, okay. In movies, my love, in movies, Jack Nicholson, Al Pacino, George Burns, and Liz Hurley have all played the same character. Who? Well, I know Nicholson and Pacino have already played men half their own age. <laughs> Somehow. Um... I know this. They've all played the devil. I'll agree. Very good. I didn't know that. Absolutely. Put an X there. Take a look at the board there, Diana. Jim Lang for the block, please. This is for the block. Mr. Lang. It's quite a statement, but TV Guide has recently deemed this the greatest television series of all time. What is it? I think it was I Love Lucy. I'll agree. That was second. Seinfeld was number uh -oh. one. Cannot put an X there. Now, how are you going to play this, uh, Steve? Jim Lang for the win. He's going for the win. Yeah. All righty. There we go. Who is responsible for giving the Virgin Islands the name Virgin Islands? Well, it was named after the Queen, the Virgin Queen of England, uh, yeah. but it was a, a Spaniard who named it. I think it was Ponce de Leon. I'll agree. It was, no, it was old Chris. Chris Columbus during his second voyage to the New World. Yeah. Uh, Put a circle there. You are back in the game. Secret Square game. Bob Eubanks for the win, please. Now listen here. Bob is speaking to Corporate America. His website is www.5easyspeakers, that's cute, .com. For more info on public appearances, check it out. All right, you're an expert on newlyweds. You know that. Yes, I am. According to the most recent U.S. Census, is a woman more or less likely to marry if she graduates from college? Well, if she graduates from college, she has become smarter. If she becomes smarter, she's less likely to get married. That's my answer. <laughs> there. I'll agree. In fact, a marriage in which the wife has a college degree may be more stable, in fact. And you said that they are less more... likely to get married. Yes. So we can't, we have to put an X there. You're back in the game here, Steve. 
go with Wink Martindale, please. You got it. True or false, a U.S. president's daughter once appeared naked, or as we say in West Virginia, once appeared naked in a Playboy magazine. Uh, I happen to know that story, and it is, uh, it is true. It's a true story. True. I agree. Yes, it was uh, Patty Reagan. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh. That means that our time is up for this game. Let us add up the scores. Uh, first of all, uh, Charles Nelson Riley and Brett Summers were the secret square. We were the secret square? You were the secret square. And I never knew it. I didn't say that. It was a secret. Well, you didn't win anything on this day, but yesterday you won a grand total of how much? 31,700, including today. She won that beautiful car. I congratulate you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for playing the Hollywood Squares. And you have won $3,000, Steve. I congratulate you. Thank that you. means... Thank you. You're going to see old Tom Bergeron up there. He's going to come down here, and the two of you are going to play the bonus round after this commercial word. Hey, I had a ball. Enjoy. Thank you. And at the fairgrounds in Tyler. Time before we get to the bonus round, how about another hand for Peter Marshall? Thank you. Thank you. Really was such a treat to see. All right, Steve, you got three thousand dollars in the front game. Take a look over here at these nine keys. One of them will start what, Rod Roddy? Well, if you happen to like sun and fresh air, it's a luxurious Chrysler Sebring convertible. Those who love the open air. Beautiful and functional with a spacious trunk for weekend getaways. From Bergie Motor Car Company for $29,200. Very nice. By the way, could, could I just make the uh, comment, Carol Merrill is the best thing to come out of Australia since Foster's. Uh, really, <laughs> no question. All right, now, Steve, up to now we found out a bit about what the stars know. Here's where we find out what you know about them, all right? You'll pick a square. I'll read a statement about that star. If you uh, agree or disagree correctly, you win the square. At the end of 30 seconds, for every square you got correct, we'll take away one of the bad keys, improving your chances of starting the car. We're going to put 30 seconds on the clock for Steve, which starts ticking when he picks his first star. Go ahead. Kathy Griffin. Kathy was the U.S. Army Reserve for two years. I'll agree. No, next. Jim Lang. Jim hosted the 1989 Miss America pageant. I'll disagree. Right, next. Jimmy Walker. Jimmy played a Green Beret in Apocalypse Now. I disagree. Right, next. Wink Martindale. Wink's wife dated friend Elvis Presley for six years. I'll agree. Right, next. Peter Marshall. Peter and Paul Lynn started the touring production of The Odd Couple. I disagree. Right, next. Chuck Woolery. Had a top 40 hit song called Naturally Stone. I disagree. Wrong, next. Martin Mull. Martin worked as a judge for the game show Jeopardy. I disagree. Right. Next, Bobby Mack. Yeah. Okay, time's up. Nice job. Right. Let's go, Captain Keys. Hello, Carol. How are you? All right, 30 seconds. You got five right. Let's take away five of these bad keys. One of those four, Steve. It'll start that car. Okay, this is for my beautiful wife of five years, Cheryl Ann. She gets the car if you start it? She gets it. All right, oh, Cheryl Ann. Ann. This is for you, honey. Oh, no. Oh. All right, come on out of here, Steve. While the divorce papers are being uh, written up, <laughs> let's uh, take a look at which key would have started the car. Okay, right over here. Now, here's the, here's the good news. Today, you've won $8,000. If you get back here to the bonus round tomorrow, you'll start with eight keys, all right? Yes, sir. Steve will be here to defend his championship. Peter Marshall, our center square, will be back. Carol Merrill, all the stars. I'm Tom Bergeron, hoping you join us tomorrow on Hollywood Squares. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Promotional -bye. consideration furnished by the following. You know, it's like riding a bicycle, I guess. You get off, you get back on. It's pretty simple. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun to do. It really was. It brought back a lot of old memories. These are the things legends are made of. It was just a, it was a nice thing. I, I enjoyed it. I think Tom enjoyed it, too.
see you tomorrow. We love you. We'll see you here on The Family Feud. Show until next time. This is Peter Tumarkin on behalf of the Focati Rug saying thanks for pressing your luck. Bye-bye. So anyway, we have just 10 seconds to say goodbye. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. So long. Bye-bye. Yeah. We got we, five seconds. Oh, no. We have three. Two, one. Bye. Bye.